right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sadko here. Welcome back to another episode of Hey Mr. Sadko, what do you think of this? Where you put a question down in the comments down below, and I take those questions and turn them into a video next time. So the first question today is going to come from Duke Lancaster. He asks, what is a shadow? So this is in response to my previous video where I was talking about is there going to be another dip in cryptocurrency? And uh, turns out there was a dip in cryptocurrency. And in that video, I talked about how the lowest point of crypto at the time was a dip, and which is always a dip usually. And, and what that dip represents is a shadow of the candle chart. So I already have a video on uh, how to read a candle chart. Uh, I made it quite a while ago. And so I understand how some people will ask a question when I've already made a video on something because I'm starting to develop a quite the repertoire, if you will, of videos. And I have many, 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 and there are always many to come as well. So I don't expect everybody to uh, browse through, you know, upwards of 100 videos or more uh, in order to find what they are looking for if they don't even know if I have it in the first place. So. Uh, I'm going to put that video in the description below on how to read a candle chart. So you guys can check that out, but I'm going to go over what most of what was in that video uh, now. However, there was some stuff in that video that I'm not going to talk about now where, as, as where the candle chart initially originated and some of its, its names and meanings and things like that. Uh, so what is a shadow? So a shadow, first and foremost, um, are these little tiny little lines that you see on a candle chart. But to understand those, you need to understand the candle chart itself. The candle chart is a is a function of a an old Japanese method uh, of dealing with the, I, I believe, the rice trade. And I, I think the, the it's it's sort of hard to pin when exactly it was developed. But some say the like the 17th century sort of thing. Uh, so it's just a really great way to read the market. So first and foremost, you're going to see the green and orange in this case. Normally they are white and black. It depends on the exchange that you're on. Uh, most exchanges nowadays have them as, as green and orange or red and green. So the, the green ones, you actually read at the top of them, not the shadow point, but the actual top of the square. And that is where it ended at that point. So these are all rises in price, and the orange ones are dips in price. Uh, so what you have to understand is that you can put these into different uh, categories here, either one minute charts, and, and it'll only have uh, from uh, back from 12.40 a.m. or so here back to 11.45 a.m. So it only represents a little more than an hour there. And then these ones will represent 15-minute intervals and so on, depending on how you like to read it. If you're day trading, uh, I actually like to have it on the five-minute chart. Uh, the one-minute is a little too uh, too fast, and uh, it's hard to get a good read of what's happening with the one minute, but the five minutes is really great. And then if you're looking to see what maybe the price was uh, 24 hours ago or a couple days ago, the one hour and six hour charts are really good at that. So let's take a look at the 15 minute and see what happened. The highest price lately was um, approximately 9,700, uh, and that was just uh, several hours ago, and the lowest price uh, of all time today within this 15-minute graph, so it's only going to show from uh, just past February 26th as it's uh, 12.43 a.m. for me at the moment, and it shows it to 10 a.m. yesterday, but again, you can extend that with this chart here. So, and that point was uh, about 9,300 as a difference between 9,700, close to 98. I'm just sort of rounding here. But so with the green ones, that represented a rise in price during that increment. So you got to understand that these are 15 minute increments. And at the top of the green ones, you read them at the base of the square. So that's what it ended at that 15 minute point. And then you have a red one here. And so it started at this price here during the red and it dipped all the way down here. And at the end of that 15 minute increment, it ended down here at the bottom at 9580. Uh, and then the next 15 minutes, it went up and stopped there and continued onward. So uh, with the orange ones, you're going to read them at the bottom of the candle and the green ones you read at the top because these are ending prices. And so it ended higher than it was uh, initially the last period. 
so therefore it was green and then this one went up a little bit so therefore it was green and then this price ended down here during this 15 increment uh, so a shadow is a little bit interesting and it kind of tells you how much demand there was at that point and so for example this green one here during this time it ended right here at about 9700 and so during this time this 15 minute increment it actually gone all the way down to 9677 so that means that sellers actually drove this price all the way downward but then buyers picked it up and drove that price upwards and then it ended down here so as you can see the entire 15 minute period here it did get to this price during this 15 minute period and it also got all the way up here but then sellers drove it right back down and it just so happened to end on this uh, at this 15 minute period at 97.62 so getting your price on a shadow is um, not critical but rather more so lucky it's very hard to determine uh, what the price would be during a shadow in the next increment because as you can see when you're day trading you don't know what is next you're not going to know what this price is next and if you do you're either Dion Warwick and the Psychic Friends Network or you're an inside trader um, or you're just a really good lucky guesser and of course, there are a few things that can help you determine what the price will be, and that's news, trends, and of course, if you want to get into the Fibonacci uh, whole deal with that, that's a whole different story. But that is not always true, the whole Fibonacci graphs and things like that as well. Uh, so with the overlays, you can actually add, um, you can actually add these as well, and the extrapolated uh, average here. I forgot offhand what uh, what the actual definition for it is, but uh, the definition not entirely necessary. Um, so it's basically the extrapolated average. I, can't, I don't think I can remember what the M is for at the moment here uh, on the spot. I could certainly Google it. And uh, so these are kind of helpful because they can show you uh, what's what what exactly is going on. It kind of shows you the flow, the average flow. And if you start to see it go down, uh, that means that prices are typically going to start going down. However, that's not always true either, um, as these are, of course, a there is a lag factor to be taken into consideration when you add these overlay lines onto your graphs, because these lines don't appear until the end of that 15 minute increment that you have on your chart. <clears throat> So they're not going to help you see the future, but just what already happened. Um, so those are candle charts in a nutshell. Um, the individual candles are are called doji. And so the, the shadows are just what happened, what it, what it got to during that period, but it did not end on that period. And so rather, um, it started here. That's why this, this green square is square at the bottom, because it started here. And then it actually physically ended at this point here, which was above that price. Therefore, it turned to a green candle. Uh, but it did get up here, and it did not end there. So therefore, you see a shadow. And it, it did dip all the way down. Therefore, you see a shadow. So I hope that cleared things up for a little bit, uh, for, for a few people, rather. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, there you have it for candle charts for the, uh, for the shadows. So uh, the next question comes from Osama Zasen. I probably butchered that, and I'm sorry for that. But he asks, uh, if I can't trade on GDAX, what do you think about Plus 500, which is an exchange? Uh, this exchange actually uses um, shares and commodities as well. So it's stocks and cryptos combined in one. So my initial thoughts on F Plus 500 is not that good. Hey, here's the reason why. So if we go to CoinMarketCap, and say we take uh, Bitcoin as, as, as it's the highest market cap coin, and the most exchanges have Bitcoin. Uh, pretty much every single exchange has Bitcoin. If it does not have Bitcoin, then it's kind of a weird exchange, to be totally honest. So one thing I like to do is go to, go to Bitcoin on coin market cap here, and then click Markets. And you can see the number one market is OKX. <clears throat> God, I got a really uh, scratchy throat today. So... This is trading the most Bitcoin in the world, OKX, at 7.52%. And you'll see where I'm getting at with this in a moment. So GDAX does not allow everybody to trade. 
it does include Europe, but it does not include all European countries. For example, it does not include Turkey, as only 3% of Turkey is, uh, is actually in Europe. <clears throat> God, I just can't clear my throat good enough. Um, so that's not an included country. And there are other inc non-included countries even in Europe. So uh, not everybody can trade on GDAX, just like not everybody can trade on another exchange or this exchange. So in this case, uh, Osama basically asks that he can't trade on GDAX, so what about trading on 500 plus? And the reason why I'm showing you this is because of liquidity and the amount of coins actually traded. So I do uh, trade a little bit on Kraken and I trade Ripple on Kraken. The reason why I trade Ripple on Kraken is because Kraken does not, ex or excuse me, Ripple does not exist on GDAX. Uh, so if you want to trade Ripple, you need to do it on a different exchange. Uh, so I chose Kraken for that. Now, Kraken is not the greatest exchange in the world. They have had some major issues in the past, none of which involved hacking, but just rather involved a very poor and slow engine. And I find the exchange very slow to this day. So it's not my preferred exchange to day trade on, but rather hold some Ripple and then sell it at a later date. Uh, which I find acceptable. Now you can trade on Kraken, you can day trade on Kraken, but it, it, it's just a bit of a slow exchange. And for anybody that trades on Kraken, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just every single move, every single link that you click on on Kraken just takes a while to actually load up. Whereas all other exchanges and even websites, you know, as soon as you click, boom, you got that website up. Uh, whereas Kraken is very, very slow. Uh, so GDAX trades uh, about 1.96% of the entire volume of Bitcoin. And what do I mean by liquidity? I mean the fact of it can sell and buy very, very quickly. So for example, on Kraken, uh, Kraken has a much lower liquidity overall than say GDAX. So whenever I'm trading Litecoin, uh, I did trade Litecoin for a little while on Kraken. So whenever I trade Litecoin or uh, a mass amount of Ripple on Kraken, when I go to do a limit sell, and then let's say I sell Ripple for, it's not at $2 yet, but let's, for example, I, I try to sell all of my Ripple at once for $2. So the price just hits $2, it's at $1.99, you know, and then it hits $2 and then it starts to go back down. Well, a lot of times what you'll find out is you'll get a partial order and only half of, uh, only half of your Ripple sells. And so then you're left with this other half of Ripple that did not sell and then you're left with half of your US dollars that you made by selling that Ripple. And that's because of a lack of liquidity. There wasn't enough buyers at that $2 mark to sell all of your uh, Ripple in a limit order. Now, I could have made a market sell to do that, but of course, that's a higher fee because you're now a uh, taker of liquidity rather than a maker of liquidity. And I usually like to do limit orders because, of course, the lower fees. And GDAX has free limit and buy orders. Uh, limit sell and buy orders and so that's really good and so I rarely ever run into the problem a, a liquidity problem on GDAX so if I want to sell 10 Litecoin at $250 all of them will sell no problem even a hundred Litecoin will sell no problem there's no there's no liquidity problem on GDAX so Here's why I'm bringing this chart up, and I know it's been a while, I've been rambling a little bit, but uh, plus 500 is not even on uh, coin market cap. Now, I don't want to say that coin market cap is the, as you can see, it's just not on there, and if you type in Kraken, it is on there. Uh, if you type in GDAX, it's on there, it's under, listed under exchanges here. Uh, Bitfinex, you know, will be on there as well. Bitfinex exchanges. Um, now, I don't recommend Bitfinex for most people because if you go to Bitfinex, I wonder if they can, I wonder if I can go to their website through them. Yes, I can. Uh, here's the problem with Bitfinex. If you go to demo, it should say it up here. It may not say it right away. But if you go to sign up, it will give you a warning immediately saying that this exchange is not for new newcomers. So if you actually go to sign up, it'll say that it's not for newcomers. And it's very hard to get a Bitfinex account anyway because they make you wait several months. Uh, I, in fact, do have a Bitfinex account. But what the, the, the problem with Bitfinex is that, one, you, you have to wait a while before you get on it. And two, you have to uh, 
have uh, $10,000 to put onto Bitfinex before you can even begin trading. So it's sort of a professional trading platform. They don't allow you to just go on there with $100 or with $1,000 even. You have to have $10,000 minimum to begin trading on Bitfinex. So the reason why I have brought up CoinMarketCap once again is because 500 plus is not even listed on there at all. And now I don't want to say that CoinMarketCap is the end all be all of exchanges and such. Um, 500 plus could work just fine for you, but the problem is going to be liquidity. If it's not listed on coin market cap, then obviously it doesn't have a large enough liquidity to be so recognized that it is, it is automatically put on coin market cap. So my advice to you, Osama, if you're going to choose a plus 500, just be careful with that because you may run into liquidity issues as you are buying and selling. You may not be able to buy as much as you would want. You may not to be able to sell as much as you want when you want to do it. So my advice to you is find a different exchange. Uh, it, like I said, if you go to markets and click, just click Bitcoin, you can do this on any of the coins for the most part, but uh, Bitcoin is the biggest and it's going to show the most exchanges. And just try these exchanges. Uh, if you don't have 10,000 US dollars uh, or $10,000 in any particular currency, uh, do not go on to Bitfinex. Now, Binance might be able to accept you and you're going to have to try these different exchanges But because first of all, that you, uh, as you ask the question, what do I think about 500 plus, about you switching to it, I don't know where you are from. Uh, I imagine by the name, possibly the Middle East. So I couldn't say exactly what exchange is going to accept your country or your region and that is going to work. So you have to try numerous ones. Uh, OKX is the biggest, as you can see, but that is mostly a Korean uh, mostly an Asian exchange. It does not allow Americans. Uh, Bitfinex, you need 10,000 US dollars. GDAX is fairly limited. It's mostly Americans, Canadians, uh, Europeans, small parts of Asia. Uh, so you can try these other ones like Binance, give that a shot and see if they accept your country. Um, and if not, try Kraken. Kraken is typically pretty accepting of most countries. It is not the greatest exchange by far, I will admit, but it is, um, it does have fairly good liquidity. As long as you're not trading thousands upon thousands, it has pretty good liquidity and it's a great starting point. So I would recommend Kraken. Uh, if they do not accept your country, go ahead and try Binance. And if not, again, you have this big list of exchanges. Some of them are repeating because it shows like Tron to Bitcoin and all these different uh, coins to Bitcoin. So you're going to receive a lot of repeating um, uh, Poloniex is also a possible choice for you as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments and then I will take those questions and make a new video. I know this was sort of a rambling video. I didn't mean for it to go on this long, uh, but these topics were actually pretty deep once I began to, to start talking about them. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.